This is the view from the upper town of Quebec City. At the foot of the hill lies the lower town, home to the largest car-free district in North America. We're looking out of the funicular as it descends to the lower town, also known as Petit Champlain. This cliff divides the lower town from the upper town. The car-free district is 1,200 feet north-south, 400 feet east-west, and comprises a dozen blocks. Life in the district differs greatly from that in the car-dominated places we know so well, so it's worth a close look. This is a model for a sustainable future with a better quality of life. The funicular is the most dramatic entrance from the upper town, but there are also long flights of stairs. All of the streets are narrow, but only a few short alleys are so narrow that fire trucks can't enter. The buildings run four stories or less, as is usual in places built before elevators. This gives the area an intimate scale. Petit Champlain is the site of one of the first European settlements in North America. The area has been continuously inhabited since then, but by 1970, much of it lay in ruins. Instead of building new blocks with massive buildings in the modernist style, the city preserved what it could and reconstructed the rest in the original style, leaving only these few ruins. The reconstruction feels so faithful that it is easy to imagine that these are the original buildings. Freight delivery is the toughest challenge in a car-free area. Only Venice has off-street freight delivery using boats. The large car-free medina in Fez, Morocco, employs donkeys and mules to haul its freight. Most car-free areas allow delivery vehicles, but only during a few hours in the morning, as is the case here. Petit Champlain is a major tourist destination, and its economy relies on tourism. There are countless cafes, restaurants, art galleries, boutiques, and souvenir shops. Popular guided tours are offered throughout the day. There are some unsuspected interior courtyards. Even though a little traffic noise penetrates from outside the district, it is substantially free of noise. It's a comfortable place to spend time. In the absence of cars, the streets feel safe and small children can run about without direct supervision. The pace here is slow and relaxed and it draws many vacationing families. The vigorous French-Canadian culture lends it an exotic air. Most businesses and attractions in the upper town are located on streets with car traffic, although a few streets like these are very quiet even if not car free. The freedom from cars in the lower town makes it feel quite different from the upper town. Street musicians are a major draw. The music runs the gamut, but one gentleman in particular offers traditional Quebecois music. He lets the kids join in his music making. In 1759, British troops defeated the French in a major battle just up the hill from here. France soon ceded its claims in Canada to Britain, and French culture has been under assault ever since. Against all odds, the unique French-Canadian culture has endured, and in recent times it has flourished. The district is not without its problems. It is an economic monoculture, drawing most of its tourists from outside the region so it is vulnerable to gyrations in the world economy. In Spain, car-free areas are frequented mainly by locals. This gives them a stability and authenticity that is somewhat lacking in the lower town. Some say it feels a bit artificial. However, the place serves as a car-free example unique in North America. For that reason alone, it is worth visiting. Add friendly locals, terrific food, cool summers, and lovely architecture, and you have a great destination. We can have as many of these places as we decide to build. There is nothing difficult, high-tech, or even expensive about it. Car-free districts are on the path to sustainability. Indeed, climate change will soon force major changes on car-dominated American cities. We will have to adopt new patterns of settlement and new ways to get around. Car-free districts are delightful places to live and allow sharp cuts in fossil fuel consumption. Life will change in the decades ahead, but these changes can actually improve the quality of our lives.